Hey y'all, this is Coach in the Fight here. I'm about to go, we're about to go through and look at chapter 60 of this book now. I've been listening to this, um, this, the book we're talking about is the Third Testament of the Bible. Um, if you're not familiar with that, look at some of the earlier classes. We've done a few introductions. This is kind of an introduction, but it's, you, you know, we expect you to be a little familiar with it. So we're here on chapter 60. Now, um, I'm not skipping chapters is this that this one talks about the work in accord with the spirit of christ so if i'm planning on going out and and doing some work you know um for this for christ then i might as well do it in accord with the spirit so i said well maybe this ought to be the first serious class so um we're gonna try to make it through here as possibly as quickly as we possibly can um we'll just roll with i'm not sure how we're gonna do we'll let the spirit take over then, Father, come to you today, Lord, I ask for you to allow us to have an efficient and effective class in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, you look at here. Yeah, it's like a, a, the last one starts at 112, verse 112. So it's a nice little section here. It's just chapter 60. But some of the things we're going to be looking at is the qualities and abilities needed in the new, in the new apostles, meaning if you want to be an apostle in this new age you now. If you've been an apostle in the old age, this you know you should perk up because this one is going to require some different. If you haven't been an apostle in the old age and you'd like to be an apostle in the new age, well, you should perk your ears should perk up because you know this you want to do it right. And so we'll hear about that in the first section. In the next section, it'll be the the uh, comportment while spreading the word. Now I'm wondering what comportment means. I guess I should have looked that up before we got started. But we're trying to roll through this. The correct way to spread the word. The mission of comfort and healing those who suffer, as verse 95, we'll start there. And then in verse 112, we'll start the moment for beginning the worldwide mission. All right, so let's, let's get to it. Have lunch since here. Hmm. All right, look at verse 1 here, guys. It's, it's, it's saying, how difficult it seems for you to make way, complying with your mission during this period. But I say to you that it is not difficult. Because humanity is prepared to receive my message. Now, that's an of all these verses are important, but what jumped out at me there is prepared to receive my message. And this is what I'm finding when I'm out there on the street is people who I haven't been able to break through with the New Testament, much less the Old Testament. Ain't no way, you know, these folk, you know, they don't they don't they, they don't even like Paul. They don't want nothing to do with Moses. And but they are listening to this, you know intently you know seriously you know i had I, i've had you know you know i can do a, i can do a uh, thing where we talked about just some of the stuff that i'm seeing but the what he says prepared to receive my message they're ready to receive it look right there where it says your destiny has always been to convey to the world the new messages and revelations so that's letting us know you know a lot of people you know they they want to know what is the Israelites' role? You know, you got this multitude. Everybody gets to, you know, enjoy this thing. Everybody gets to go into heaven, and you know, you know, what about all the struggles? What about all the stuff we've been through? And what about all the stuff we're going through? You know, well, this is one of the, one of the things. You know, you say, well, you know, we've always been there to to uh, convey the messages and revelations of the Lord. So we always had, um, well, we always were a little different. Look at verse 3. It says, But do not fear. Take the seed which I have entrusted to you and sow it. Now, other places we'll find that he only gives us a certain amount of seeds to sow. Meaning everybody is not going to listen to what we have to say. But what he's saying is, is that you sow the seeds you have and then watch the seeds that you sow. Sow their seeds and then you m watch it multiply that way. You don't try to, to, to get, you know, you don't, you don't try to plant your 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 seed in everybody's ground because everybody's ground is not set to receive you. He said he broke us down into congregations. And he said, then you'll see ones that you thought were sterile are actually fertile. And the, and he'll tell us later on why this is, is because, you know, our spiritual awareness is, is heightened right now as we start to, you know, into this third era. People are spiritually aware and they start, they they start to hear mistruths because, you know, they, they're hearing the father from, you know, within now. And when the father is telling them something from within their conscience and then they hear something from without that sounds different. And it also sounds like, hey, you trying to trick me. Then, you know, it's hard to deceive people nowadays. 
that's what it will say later on. But here it's saying that, you know, people you think now aren't listening, don't want to hear what you got to say. You know, you put this new, this third testament in, in, in their hands and, you know, you find them in the truck two hours later still listening to it, you know, in the headphones. And it's like, wow. All right, let's go on. All right, look at here, verse four. It says, do not cease to comply with your mission um, because you feel unworthy. But, and, and, and he's saying, you know, if you feel like you ain't up to what the task, look, look at here. Th take this as a warning. He said, because the guy who doesn't do his mission is, is, is equal to the guy who goes out and does harm. So if you don't do good, you, you might as well be doing harm. It's saying right here. See, read it for yourself. Verily I say to you that he who knowingly violates the law does as much harm as he who has a mission and fails to give it fulfillment. See right there, verse 5, it says, The Father will come to demand what you have done wrong as well as what you have failed to do. It's, you know, so, you got to account for both. And it says both of them will cause your spirit to suffer. Now look right there in verse 6, he says, Convince them with your deeds of love. See, there ain't going to be no whole lot of preaching in this, in this era. And in, in the last era, there was a whole lot of preaching. In the first era, there was a whole lot of killing. You didn't do right, you know, somebody bust you in the head with a big old rock. And in the second era, it was a whole lot of preaching, and they was busting you in the head with a Bible. In this area, ain't nobody going to get busted. You your busting going to come from within as your conscience lays wood on you, if you know what I mean. Okay, and then it goes on. He says, um, when they arrive among the multitude, and the light of faith is kindled in their heart. See, chances are the light of faith is not kindled in your heart unless you are a hardcore Bible person. You know, and, you know, um, because he, of, of his divine plan. But when that is, when he says when it is kindled in your heart, then he's going to name them the sons of the new people of Israel. Now, that very well could be the, the new name that we've been waiting for. I mean, we're not waiting for another testament. So all that revelation stuff that, that you know, is in there, we might as well start to poke around and see, you know, if we're getting our answers or our keys to it. And I believe this is a key to, you know, when it talks about the new name that we're supposed to get. The new name is the people of Israel. He said, well, wow, I respect this, um, you know, you know, name like Porsche or, you know, Tamarica or, you know, some, some you know, really exciting name. But, well, you remember in the, in Revelations, he said that, you know, when he come back, you know, he's going to have his name written on his diet, on, you know, different, and nobody's going to know his name. Well, then in a few verses later, he says his name is the word of God. So, you know, you don't get much more exciting than that, you know, in such, you know, plain words. So for us to be called the people of Israel, that ain't nothing to be to, to sneeze at. Now, I'm not sure how this works down. You see these numbers down here, 66 and 1 through 14. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't looked. I don't know if it's saying chapter 66, verse 14 through 7. This is one. We, we're trying this new. Give some comments. We'll see. I ain't even tell you guys where to get the books from. Ha. Check one of the other the other classes. I'll show you where I can get where I get this PDF from that I'm using here. Uh, again, we're in qualities and abilities needed in the new apostle. Verse 7. All right, look. This is deep here. Look how it ends there. Verse 7. That example shall spread to the hearts, to all hearts. Now, okay, this is deep because look at this example that he's saying here. Those who rise from the degra degradation to a life of service and charity toward their brethren, charity being love and, you know, towards your brother. He says, then, you know, I shall show them as an example that my doctrine has light and grace to regenerate the sinners. So he's, he's saying that he's going to use you as an example. If you do these three things, if you rise above and if you, 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 um, you know, get in this life of service and charity, then he's going to use you as an example of, you know, uh, his, uh, that his doctrine has light and grace to regenerate the sinners. All right, look at look at verse eight here. Let's go to the end of verse eight here. He says, I do not want this to happen to you. What is he talking about? He says they're going to be calling you hypocrites and false preachers. OK, now, unless you want to be called a false preacher or a hypocrite, you really need to study. We need we need really need to study verse eight. It says, who will not wish who will not wish to be of those who bear witness of me? You know, who, who don't want to be a counted in that number? But truly, I say to you. 
that if your actions do not emerge truthfully from your heart, they will not bear fruit and your brethren and on, they will not bear fruit on your brethren. Meaning if all you're doing is talking, then they're not going to see the necessary fruit they're going to need to, to see blessing. See, in the, in the era that we live in, there's been a lot of talk, but you haven't seen a lot of, you know, actions and deeds. And, you know, you haven't seen a lot of miracles and blessings, to be honest. You know what I mean? All that's going to go away. And you'll be able to see, okay, the, the regular old preacher, man, you may not see no change in him. But when you start to see the, what did he call them, the, the children of the new Israel, when you start to see the sons of the new Israel emerge, you're going to see these people emerge with healing power and with love and you're going with charity and with stuff that you can say, hey, and that looks like what I'm supposed to be seeing, not, you know, a collection plate, you know, coming around, but, you know, actually something we can use, so. All right, now it's talking about deceiving here. Look at verse 9, it says, You must know that during these times it is very difficult to deceive humanity. Their spirit has awakened, and although they are lost in the materialism of their existence, okay, so he's saying you ain't going to be defeat, you ain't going to be to, to deceive the, the masses, it's going to be difficult to deceive the masses. You know, in the other one, in the age of deception, it was always easier to trick a person. Than it was to convince a person that they've been tricked. I mean, think about that. That was always true. Still is true. You know, it's easier to trick the person than to convince them that they've been tricked. Well, here, he's saying in this new era during this time or in this time that we're in or we're entering, it's, it's harder to deceive the multitude, the people. And he, he says the reason why is that their spirit has awakened. And although they are lost in the materialism of their existence they are sensitive to every spiritual manifestation spiritual manifestation meaning you know something good but some blessing for you in the spiritual world and all of a sudden it makes it makes itself seen in the in and in, in the, in the uh, third dimensional world something we can see you know and <clears throat> the, it's saying here that let me let me let me read it right word for word make sure because that's very important their spirit has awakened so your spirit is awake but watch this and although they are lost in the materialization materialism of their existence so that's the problem it's the materialism that's bogging us down i, I tell my wife a lot of times you think of your spiritualism as like you think of it like a, a small animal like a cat or dog small dog and when you start throwing blankets and stuff on the dog's head you know if you throw one blanket over the dog's head the dog gonna shake itself out and he gonna get out and he gonna go on about his business well that's your that's your spiritual that's your spirit when you know when you you know you have to do something like go get a thing of eggs or you know something like that but if you keep on throwing those blankets on that dog it's gonna weigh him down and that dog gonna be stuck on that and he ain't gonna be able to do nothing with eventually you won't even be able to see him wiggle you won't even be able to hear him well that's our spirit as we have all this materialism on top of us, new trucks, new car, well, old trucks, old cars, bikes, whatever it is, you know, that's that's a material thing. It's clouded our spiritual world. And that's why, you know, our, you know, the Lord tell, you know, that's why he says it's hard for the rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's because he don't want to give up his stuff. He don't want, he don't want to give up all that stuff. I mean, I had three motorcycles and, you know, I mean, you know how hard it was to get to that. And it says, and if you cannot deceive your brethren, will you deceive your father? Mm -mm, I'm doing that. Verse 10. Allow the love of your master to lodge within your being. Um, meaning, uh, um, your spirit nature, allow that spirit nature to now shine inside of you. So that you may get to forgive your enemies just as he forgives you. So that you may get to forgive your enemies just as he forgives you. Then your heart shall be like an anchor of salvation among humanity. Okay. So it looks like you can't even forgive your enemies until you do what? Allow the love of a master to lodge within your heart. So, okay, that makes sense. Okay, I just read it wrong, but that makes sense. You have to have the love in your heart in order to be, in order to forgive. So you forget about, you know, forgiving people until you actually love them. Do not fear before men, for truly I say to you, I will speak through your mouths. You remember in Revelations when he says, if you ever, you know, get called before the judge, well, don't worry about what you're going to say because he talks. Well, this is what he's saying. He's speaking through your, through our inside. He's coming from our conscience, from our spirit beings. I will bear witness of my word through you 
and its echo will reach the confines of the earth. The influential, the insignificant, the heads of state, the scientists, and the theologians. See, this is why it's really important not to look at pictures of, of these people. Because you don't know if you're going to be standing in front of Donald Trump or not. You don't know if you're going to be standing in front of Barack Obama or the Pope or whatever. And if you do, if you stand up, you can go back to the King James Version or whatever, you know, which, you know, 66 books. If you do look at these pictures of these people, he says he's, he will confound you, meaning he will make it so that you're starstruck. You know, people, when they, when they, you know, they finally do get to meet this star that they've been swooning over all of these years, you know, the little girl who finally gets to meet that guy and, and when she meets him her mouth just falls open and she can't say anything but the, uh, 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 she get, that's starstruck and the reason why is because she's been looking at his picture she's been just sitting there looking at his picture and you know and that's what he promises and it's true so you should you shouldn't be looking at pictures of you know people in power positions because if you put in a position where you, you're going to see their power and you're going to be starstruck you're not going to be able to do what the lord sent you there to do if you sitting there, you know what I'm saying, googly eyed or whatever, want the guy's autograph. Now I'm trying to give me an autograph. <laughs> I don't think so, man. You need to be ready to go toe to toe with Putin. Popping up like popcorn on Putin, you know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, let's see. Verse 12. I tell you again, do not fear the struggle. Say with all naturalness. To your brethren that the Lord has been among you. See he's already here. He's already been moving around. And as we get start to face the struggle. Don't be scared. You know it's going to intensify. What we're seeing a little taste of now. Is going to you know intensify. You know as we as he start to help us. Make moves through this tribulation. And survive this thing. For those who are in the in in the uh, ark. I mean, that's a whole nother class on itself. The ark. Do a search in this third testament. For the word ark though. You know, you can teach yourself. You don't need to wait on, you know, me. 13. Tell them that he who died on the cross was Jesus, the body in which Christ was hidden, the living temple. Wait a minute. Let me tell you. He said, tell you. Tell them that he who died on the Christ was Jesus. Okay. The body in which Christ was hidden and the body in which he was critting. That's where I'm talking about. His, 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 his Christ was hidden inside that body. The living temple which the word of God inhabited. Now, you know, we all supposed to become living temples. Well, that's where the Messiah was. He was the first one. He was just the first living temple. Because we're all living temples now, whether we know it or not, whether we agree to it, or whether we keep our temple clean and holy or disgusting or whatever, it's still a temple. Jesus was just the first one. The divine love lives. The divine love lives and comes in spirit to his children to show them the road that will take them to their spiritual kingdom now i know i'm stuttering guys and uh, i'm experimenting really here so bear with me i'm gonna go ahead i messed that one all up <clears throat> 14 do not fear the judgment or ridicule of the sex and religions because you know the first thing i do is laugh they they have to you got to understand what's going on here these people have a flock it's been their mission to their job they you don't know, believe to take care of this flock and they don't want anybody coming in messing with the flock so as soon as they see you coming with the new testament they're gonna say oh like like i heard they're gonna make the little sound like they know how i am and you know unless they ever get around to actually reading them for themselves you know and embracing of themselves they may never they may never come to the realization that is but the whole time they're gonna sit there and dispute it and they're gonna say all kinds of stuff because they don't they want they're trying to protect the flock you can't hold them against them for their ignorance you know ignorance is you, you're born ignorant you know what I mean? having the books of the prophecies in their hands they are the ones who have not interpreted them and thus have not known how to wait for me see now there's their error is because they had the old testament and the new testament and they didn't know what they were supposed to be doing in order to wait for them the reason why is because they jumped over the old testament and went straight to the new testament and started becoming paulinian you know what i mean you you didn't went over moses and you became paulinian well you didn't went straight from hey you clean up the kitchen i get some you, straight to the ice cream you know what i mean you you know you, you straight in the ice cream what about the kitchen and you, oh i didn't hear that part yeah okay <laughs> So we don't know how to wait for them. On the other hand, 
you who did not know the prophecies which spoke of my return as the Holy Spirit were awaiting me. Meaning people who didn't necessarily study Jeremiah, Isaiah, or can speak verses and that they were waiting for him. While the other guys who had all the books weren't sure what they were supposed to be doing. It was the one who didn't have any books that, you know, seemed to be waiting. He says the third era has already come and humanity has not known how to interpret the gospel. That's because the gospel came from your inside. He can't, and he was talking through you from your conscience and you didn't know how to interpret his words that were that he was saying. That's what he means by the third era has already come. Even if you haven't heard, if even if this is the very first time you ever heard that there's a third testament of the Bible, you still had the spirit inside of you. What does he say early in the verse? Your, your spirit has already been awakened. And once that spirit was awakened, you in the third era. And, and you know, it's and but the problem is you just didn't know how to interpret what what it was saying I, I wish I had the guts to go to 33 and 26 and see what it's saying but maybe I'm gonna have to do that next class I guess <clears throat> verse 15 how can you invite humanity to reach such spirituality in an age of such materialism and confusion no you can't you read in the text in this in, in this text here that we went through a materialism phase that was absolutely necessary and there was no way we could have reached spiritualism in that phase. He, you know, he asks, he asks a rhetorical question and he answers it. Could we have, you know, been spiritual and materialism? Hey, no, the answer is no. You know, and then, but he's saying, how can you invite humanity to reach, to reach for it when we're still in this age? So you, you, you can't, you know, that's like, you know, you know, you reach it for something that ain't, you can't really attain to yet. I stand that, understand that your work is dif difficult, that to complete it, you must be strong and patient in the contest. Now, remember who he's talking to. Remember what we're talking. This is new apostles. These are the people who plan on being your new apostle. Now, if you got an old apostle, you should see them making transitions. Maybe they quiet. Maybe they make a noise, whatever. But this is something new. The old apostles ain't going away. You ain't got no more um, uh, uh, prophets and, you know, uh pastors and preachers and any that you ain't gonna have that that is good that's going away you ain't gonna have no more uh, no more pastors they got a shepherd over you you do your shepherd is now going to be your conscience now your shepherd is now going to be truth your shepherd is going to be this light from within you go all the way back to um uh moses in the desert and he had the pillar of fire that was guiding him through the desert okay well the desert is your mind the pillar of fire is your conscience and the guiding you're gonna be doing is from you know the holy spirit or whatever so let's pause here let's get ready to go verse 17 you must work much to correct the erroneous interpretation that has been given to my law all right so right there he's talking about erroneous interpretation has been given to my law now this is what we we're just talking about earlier where we jumped over moses and went straight to paul that's why we can't that's why we keep stumbling over this whole Jesus thing when he says he 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 was the end of the law. He and then in another verse he say he come, you know, not to destroy lives but fulfill the law. And we're like, which one is it? You know what I mean? It's because we jumped over that period. We didn't really get a solid grasp on what we were supposed to be doing. Remember he said that the law was our schoolmaster. Well, we didn't go to school. We skipped school. You know what I mean? Went straight to that on the New Testament. You know what I mean? We went straight to lunch, we went straight to recess. You didn't skip first. You didn't skip all four periods. You know, first period that was the Torah. The second period, you know, that was Kings and Chronicles and all the Judges and all that stuff. Third period was the prophets. You know what I mean? You, you'd have missed all that, and you straight up in recess now, and you ready to go to second period. I'm gonna tell you what. And the second half of the day is when we're gonna have the test. You gonna get your butt whooped. You you're gonna make a bad grade. And when you got a bad grade, bad grade, guess what happens? Guess what happens when you get make a bad grade? You ain't got a guess. You know what happens when you fail class? What happens when you fail class? You go back to, you know what I mean? You start next year. You know, we're going to show up. You're going to have all your new fresh clothes on. You're going to have all your new book bag on. But you're going to be in the same old class. You're going to be right back in there. And that's what this is. You know, you're going to get recycled. As I like to say, you know, you're going to get recycled. 18. But you must remember that you cannot make their concepts and practices vary in an instant okay I mean you can't change what they're trying to do in an instant the word very was tricking me up in the audio but now I'm looking at it here on paper and it's, it's very so you can't make their concepts and practices change in an instant but that 
to achieve it, you must sheathe yourself in patience and goodwill. Meaning you got to smile. You know what I'm saying? When you sit up there at the podium talking to this guy about, you know, the, the, um, uh, the essence of the Third Testament in light of the, the, new te the, the Second Testament and the First Testament. And he's sitting there trying to explain to you what Jesus told Nicodemus, you know, and you just got to sit there and smile while he finishes his conversation. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. Somebody else in the audience may step up and save you before you have to say anything. You know what I mean? You have to maintain your composure because they're going to get it one day. They may not get it now, but it's like talking to this little three year old that don't that don't understand, you know, that, that thing, you know, you, you know. You keep telling them over and over again, and eventually you stand back and you let them go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? Especially a little boy child. Let it put a hand on the stove. He'll be all right. He ain't going to hurt but a little bit. And give an example of love with your works. Again, I'm going to go to that 22660. I don't even know what it is. I guess I got to go read the introduction. 19. Only the clean of heart should go to the lands and nations to expand my message. For they will be the only ones worthy to give testimony to the truth of this work. Okay. Um, and all that means is you, if you don't understand it, you know, be careful. Just slow down. You know, I remember when I first went through this thing, boy, I was, I was spouting off some stuff at the mouth now. You know, and so it's saying live it a little bit first. Try to try some of you know the stuff before you, you know, jump out there. You know, we realize it's a new car and you want to go put it on the block a little bit. But master gas around your own neighborhood before you go out there, you know, and kill somebody when you didn't, you know, master gas on this, you know, thousand horsepower car and you weren't really, really ready for what it was about to do next. So, you know, kick the tires a little bit round the way before you, you know, run off. You know, I, that's what I'm doing. You know, that's why I'm looking at, you know, that's why I'm studying chapter 60, you know, as the first one because, you know, it's kind of, you see, it's kind of giving you some idea of what we're supposed to be doing. When these envoys, now you have to look up the word envoy, he uses that all the way through here, explains who they are. He, when in, in the chapter where he talks about the different um, roles, he says there's envoys, divine envoys, he calls them apostles, and then there's another one. So now he's calling the apostles envoys, right? When these envoys de depart from the lands that await them, all religious fanaticism will already have been erased from their hearts. There shall remain in them no desire to seek flattery or adulation. Okay, let's let's look at this. So it says, when these envoys de depart for the lands that await them. Now, when it's talking about lands here, you got to understand we're talking about spiritual stuff. And could have brought that up in 19. That he's not really talking about some foreign land. yet. probably ain't going nowhere. Lands as in people with a fertile ground in their mind that you're going to plant the seed of truth that's going to grow and multiply and that can be cultivated for the Lord's harvest later on. And that's what he's talking about here when he says that when they depart for these lands, meaning when these lands come to them, when they get these, these fertile ground. In other words, there's a lot of us that's out here now trying to plant seeds that, you know, the Lord ain't going to let them grow. They ain't going to grow. We can try to plant them all they want. He's not going to give us the fertile ground to come until we're ready. So he don't want us to mess it up. We're going to plant a weed in there. And then we got to spend all the time cultivating this weed. And what if we don't take the time to cultivate that weed out? You know, he only got a handful of seeds in it. You know, a handful of lands in this thing. And we got a handful of seeds. So we have to be very cautious. We have to treat each seed and each piece of fertile ground as if it you know can potentially save a lot of people's lives because that's exactly what we're talking about saving lives here mm -hmm. but he says before they can do this he says all relig religious fanaticism now that's believing that your religion is the only religion that's going that's going to live if you if you believe that you holiness and all the holiness holiness is 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 gonna be saved and the Baptists the Methodists and all them people gonna be dead you know that's fanatic that means you're fan, you you're fanatic now I always thought it was a good yeah, fanatic but you know I never really thought that that's what fanaticism was but when you read the text that's what it's talking about it's talking about thinking that your church is it your religion is it you know. Whatever, whatever it is, whether it's Christianity or whether it's Buddhism or whether it's Catholicism or whatever it is, 
if you think that that's it and ain't nobody else got nothing else to offer you or your religion, you know, then you're, you're a fanatic. And he says, before you reach these fertile lands that you guys want to, I know if you like me, you want to reach these fertile lands, you, you want to see some of this stuff grow that you've been working on. You, your, all this fanaticism has to be erased from your hearts. There shall remain in them no desire to seek flattery or adoration. I mean, you know, and, 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 and he says, nor shall they dare to dirty their hands with the payment of this world for the charity they perform. Meaning you ain't gonna pay, you, they ain't going to allow you to pay them no money. 21 says they will not sell miracles nor put a price on love for uh, price on love for one another. Um, of course they ain't going to be selling them miracles, putting a price on love. They shall be servants, not lords. Uh, what does is, what is the Messiah say? The greatest among you will be the servant. The time shall come in which you understand the greatness of true humility and then you shall see that he who has known how to be a servant has been in reality free in his mission of doing good and sowing charity. And that in his life, faith and confidence and love have accompanied him. Y'all go back and read that again. I messed that up. Moving on. Verse 23. I tell you that you will know how to feel. When your spirit is prepared to teach my doctrine to your brothers. So he tells us how, how to feel. We'll know how to feel. For it will be when you have found yourselves. Okay. You will then hear clearly the voice of the conscience. For when that is not within you. You cannot truly feel. We, I just had a parade of kids just walk through here, guys, and they're trying to be quiet. They're being so nice and, and, and stuff, and, you know, you, you can't help but acknowledge them, and you want to wave at them and tell them how nice they're being and stuff. <clears throat> so y'all excuse me. That was a good excuse for fumbling those words, I know, but I'm going to stick with it. <clears throat> In fact, I'm going to the next one. Whoop, we moving along now. Hear this word with attention and later analyze it and sow it in your hearts or in the hearts of your brothers. Okay, so get this and think about it. What are you about to say? Okay, we're thinking. Now. Got to think of caps on. Do not be content merely to understand it, but speak of it. Okay, we still talking about this thing. He, he got us in suspense. Serve as an example and teach it through your actions uh oh i found a typo you you always know me to find a typo huh. what's going on man what you do hmm? yeah <laughs> i think he's mad because he can't talk <clears throat> just give it a minute boy you won't be able to shut up later all right so let's see serve as an example and teach it through your actions show now you see if that old that old that guy reading online, I bet he said you actions too. I bet he said it. I bet you he said it. I bet you said you actions. Be intuitive so that you may know when it is purportuous when it is the purportuous moment to speak. Now, I have no I ain't never seen that word in my life. <clears throat> but look at like opportune time. Propituous uh, we need, we need, I ain't looking it up. I'm at least trying to get through the first section of this thing. Then we're going to close it out. First section. All right. So, so that you'll know when it's the time to speak and when it is better to let your deeds give testimony to my doctrine. Meaning, you know, instead of, you know, trying to explain it, so just show them. Just show them what love look like. Instead of trying to say, hey, man, go up there. Just go up there and pick the thing up and, and just demonstrate it for, for the folk. You don't just walk away and don't even say nothing. There it goes. It's cleaned up now. You know, don't even say nothing. It's, I give you one language only with which to extend my word. Uh-oh, speaking in tongues is going away. You hear that? <laughs> Glad to see that one go. And that language, And that language is spiritual love. Spiritual love is the language, right? 
which will be understood by all men. I Meaning you can go to any place, any situation. They understand if you like them or not. Even animals, even a horse out in that field. You walk up on that horse. He know if you got, if you got good intentions or not. He know. <clears throat> and he know he can kick the crap out of you if you don't too. So, A language sweet to the ears and hearts of humanity. Which will go along toppling stone by stone the Tower of Babel. Which has been built up in their hearts. See, you got to understand the Tower of Babel was built to, de to, to destroy our father. And so when he's saying that the Tower of Babel was built up in our hearts. What we have is this thing built up that's actually trying to, create, trying to destroy him inside of our own bodies. Now, it's both physical and spiritual ways. Spiritual ways is listening to false doctrine that people lie to you and tell you. You know that stuff is wrong. Some of that stuff is wrong. You just go steadily going back to it. But some of the physical ways is like through um, like uh, fluoride and the toothpaste, chemtrails overhead. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot going on here to separate us from the father. But, you know, that's what the tribulation for. All is about to get corrected. We don't have to worry about that no more. That is when my justice shall cease. For all will understand each other as brothers. Okay. Now, for my justice to cease without a whole lot of, you know, uh, uh, Sasha's making trying to figure out. First thing come to me is when he say uh, how the laws will be on our hearts. And, you know, that's what I believe. He, he won't have to do. Um, I don't know. That's just going. Boop. Only when you have transformed will I send over the world. But I send you over the world to spread my message. Okay? For until the spiritual spiritualization of my disciples is real, they shall know how to give just as they have received from me. Alright, so he's still talking about that transformation that we talked about earlier. And, you know, so, and I, he's saying that he's telling us this to say again, you know, how, let's, let's take a real world example. Over the last two weeks, I've probably shared this book with probably 15 people. But out of the 15 people, probably only, we'll say five of them actually started reading and listening to them and heard the thing. But they still don't have the, they still got to get the Old Testament. You still got to get the New Testament. You still got to, you know what I'm saying, you still got to, you know, get in the law, the covenant. You know, you still got to learn, you know. What we're supposed to be doing, and even though you have this wealth of information, and you may even enter the, the third era and open up your spiritual spiritualism to the point where you can see its fruits, but you still ain't gonna be able to go and see the world until you know you got everything until he's ready for you to go. When he when you write, he said only when you have transformed. Okay? Twenty eight. Understand that my teachings are not limited by your concepts or your ability to understand them. My divine wisdom is limitless. None can say that he had or had conceived of my revelations before I revealed them to him. See, yet yeah, you gonna think so. I know I did, I, you know, but it ain't true because he actually revealed them to you. You didn't think of them. He revealed them to you. Like one guy, you know, he was listening to the third, the third testament. And then this guy, he used to be in my Bible class about 20 years ago. He know who he is. He was about 20 years ago. He was sitting in my Bible class right up the street there. And I bet you he didn't been to five, the church five times since that, since that day. And three of them, he was in their sleep. And the other time, it was somebody else's funeral. And the other one was at, you know, a wedding. He, you know, he don't know nothing. He ain't been, he ain't been, he ain't read the Bible. I bet he couldn't find your Bible. And if he did find it, I bet it's completely full of you know dust or whatever and he don't know but you know he 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 put the headphones on his ears and he wasn't sat in the truck that day and listened to it for eight hours eight, until it was time to go and you know i pretty much had to take it off his hand he was sad to see it go and you know <clears throat> i went up to him at one point and i was you know saying oh it sound good what do you think he said he said man i'm already there I said, what do you mean? Because well, I'm already there. I already know all of this. I already got all of this. What he was saying was he think he already didn't reach the third area. He already know everything in this book. He, 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 he said that all he had to do was hear it in a thing. So in, in his mind, he, it was already revealed to him. No. The Lord was revealing it to him. So he's saying here, don't be taking credit saying you knew it before you knew it. You ain't knew nothing. Verse 29. 
While scientists try to explain everything through knowledge of the material, I am revealing the spiritual life to the humble. So you got to understand that the big boys think they're going to get this information. They ain't. It's coming from the little guy. It's coming from the bottom up, not from the top down. So while, while the Pope, the Pope going to be the last one to know. Who, who is that? Bill Not a Science Guy? You know what I mean? He, he, he going to be the last one to know any, any of this stuff going on. He's still going to be trying to figure out what's going on with the elements and, and illnesses. And it's going to be the lowly dude with the little book in his hand that know everything. You know what I'm saying? Go ask him. You know what I'm saying? They're going, well, my head. So we got to get over that hump. It ain't coming from the top. It's coming from the bottom. Uh oh, which way I don't went? <clears throat> um, the essential life in which the reason and explanation for all that exists are given. Verse 30. From the knowledge you impart will arise the concept that men form of my works. Many, from lack of understanding, will judge my doctrine by your humility. Just as in the second era, Jesus Christ was judged for his humble appearance and simple clothing. And because the twelve who followed him also showed humility in their way of dressing. Okay, so <clears throat> they they going to look at that the 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 person bringing this book is already gonna come from the bottom and he's saying don't be looking at him or, or you know what does he say there um many for lack of understanding do they judge based on the humility so when they look at say oh this poor guy is because they have a lack of understanding and he tells you later don't pity him don't get mad you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying Blaspheme they Gucci suit or they gold chain or whatever they got this that they think you know makes them superior to you or whatever no, it's because of a lack of understanding, and when you understand that, you know, you start to question yourself, can you, can you fix stupid, you know, because to me, stupid is ignorant, stupid to me is, is ignorance, you know, and I, I tie them, to, them two closely together, and, you know, I believe it can be fixed, I believe you fix it through knowledge. <clears throat> Once again, guys, this is new, I'm just getting my feet wet on here, I'm still trying to get my footing. Okay, I tell you truly that they were not covered in rags, but that they had renounced material vanity because from my teaching they had learned which were the true values of the spirit. Okay. I ain't even have to read. That shit just went on. <clears throat> Y'all give me some feedback on this thing. You know, I don't care. Can't hurt my feelings at this point. I didn't. I done been through it. Verse 31, I tell you, disciples, when men arise to study my work and see you out and question you, do not fall into temptation of believing yourself superior due to the knowledge you have received from me. All right. Yeah, he said, OK, here come a pitfall. If we do this, if, you know, they get out there and we start and we start acting like we know some stuff, this is going to be an error. He says, the more humble you show yourselves to be. The more noble and worthy of trust you will seem to them. Meaning, you know, they're not really afraid to show you their ignorance as long as they know that you ain't going to then make fun of them over it. You know what I'm saying? If you can be if you can be humble and show them that, you know, I'm here to help you, you know, I ain't going to make a fool out of you, you know, later on when I, you know, start talking about how you've been preaching for 20 years and you ain't never even read the Bible, blah, blah, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But, you know, you you don't fall into this trap. I I know I fell into it. You know, that is my strong suit knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I will beat you with it. Nah, I used to. <clears throat> Not really. And those who call themselves Christians without really being so shall know and interpret the true teachings of Christ through this light. Meaning, you know, you, you talk about the guys that you got to understand the era that we was in. It was the era of deception. There was no Elijah spirit here to teach us. We was kind of just doing what, the best we saw fit. Anybody who picked up the Bible and read it and thought they was called. Everybody who picked up the Bible and read it thought they was called for a few minutes. As soon as the Lord put them trials and tribulations on, they, you know, changed their mind or whatever and thought it was they being called, you know, thought it was something else calling them or whatever, and they ran. But, it, you know, we, so we were just working with the best what we had. Well, them days over. <clears throat> they ending, I should say. They ain't quite over in everybody's mind. Some people still live in them in reality. And so, from man to man, the light that dissipates fanaticism and frees the spirit will spread. 
and those who call themselves Christians without really being so, who know and interpret, shall know and interpret the true teachings of Christ through this light. For it shall give them an elevated concept of the spiritual life which Jesus Christ spoke in his teachings. 33. You could not go to humanity with a false or merely apparent preparation. For their spirit has evolved and the blindfold that covered their eyes has long ago fallen. Okay, we, he talked about this earlier. You're not going to be able to go in here half cocked like we do. You know, right now in 2018, you could decide you're going to be a preacher, man. You could pick up a Bible, study a verse really, really good and go down and give a whole sermon on it. We can dress you up and put some clothes on you, give you a church or, or avenue, invite some people down here, you know, call you the Reverend Pastor, Deacon Dr. Earl or whatever. And you can invite you in here and, you know, you can really sound like a good preacher, man. All you got to do is know to take the cues. When people start saying amen, keep saying that. When they get quiet, change and stop saying, you know, don't say that no more. When, they, when you expect them to say amen, they don't say nothing, change the subject. Say, say something like, y'all don't hear me. Let me go on and just keep it moving. And at the end of the day, people will be coming up and, and, and you know, praising you for what an excellent job you did. And call you by whatever title you have given yourself. Whether it's the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug or, you know, the Super Chief Apostle, you know, whatever it is. You can fake it. But he's saying here, them days over with, man. Them days over with. That that boat from floated. You try it if you want to. You ain't going to make it very far. Because he says, for their spirit have evolved. And the blindfold that covered their eyes have long ago been, fouled, been, been falling. It's gone. Bear spirituality. Offer peace and make your surroundings into an environment of health and brotherhood. And you will see how they are, how they hear and accept your words bearing my inspiration and essence. So you got to understand we've been waiting for this for a long time. We know we've been lied to. Everybody know they've been lied. They know something ain't right. You know what I mean? You, you know you, you ain't. I don't think you, you, don't think you got the show for you. The fact that you've been down there at the church is the fact that your pocket's a little bit lighter. And you know what I mean? That's, that's about it. You might have some lipstick on your cheeks from getting all the hugs or whatever. But you ain't got no you know, knowledge, wisdom, or understanding. You ain't got nothing that can help you. And like we say, them days is about over. 35. If you are to preach, if you are to preach peace, be peaceful. See, that's what he's saying. You can't, you can't put nothing fake on because you, you can't do it. You, people are going to respect you to be full of love. And if you're just talking love and you're showing you know, something other, it, it's, it's, it's going to be too phony. If you speak of love, feel it before you put it into words. And if your brothers also offer you their fruits, do not reject them. Okay, that's meaning when they start to expound on what they understand about spiritualism, don't be like, uh, don't be rough. Talking about, no, nah, I got everything. Let me teach you. You don't teach me. He's saying, you know, you, you accept them. Accept what they have to say. He says, subject everything you come to know to study. Meaning, you don't just believe it. You go study what they just said. But you don't, you don't just tell them that, you know, uh, you know, guy, you, you, you ignorant. You know what I mean? You ain't got nothing to tell me. He does. Because he, the Lord is speaking to him from within just like he is you. You know what I mean? Seriously. He, and so he makes, he, he's got some stuff you don't know. I ain't going to say if, I ain't going to say he might. But at the same time, you know, people say you can learn a lot from, you know, a toddler. You can learn a lot from a child. That don't mean you're supposed to go down to the romper room class with your note and pencil out talking about teach me. No, you still try to get around educated people. But when that child is around and he starts to try to talk to you, listen. You don't know in this age here, he, they're going to be children sitting on judges uh, 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 tables uh, issuing out uh, 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 the law because you know it's a spiritual thing. It's all about spiritual holiness, spiritual cleanliness. If you you take an old person that's you know been around for a hundred years and they spiritually dirty, and then you take a five year old that you know he didn't been through all the sanctification process, you know he didn't you know been through you know you know everything, including praying and study. Maybe he did some fasting or whatever. Who who you want on your spiritual team? I know who I'm going to pick. Old Krusty can go over there with y'all. Y'all can have him. I got me a ringer here. <clears throat> All right, let's go. <clears throat> 36. You will find those who fanaticized in their worship have reduced their understanding by making their practices materialistic. Meaning 
They believe that they're the only ones right. So in order to to make this, they they reduce their understanding down to practices that that are materialistic, meaning it's an outward appearance. Every church church on you know you know every day twice on Sunday or you know. They get a, they start to get a little bit fanatical with the oil, you know. People oh, pour it all on me. They pouring all this oil, of oil dripping all down your face. All that ain't that's a symbolic. It's not a spiritual thing. It's not the materialism of the oil. You know what I'm saying? I can't go to Walmart and buy a gallon of oil and just pour it on you and expect to heal all your ills. It, it, it don't work like that. <clears throat> but that's where we li that's where we're leaving from all that materialistic stuff. Just because you got a cross on, you think you protect it. No, that's materialism. That ain't that cross ain't protecting you. Patiently help them to broaden their knowledge. Show them the horizons their spirit can reach if they know how to penetrate my teachings. Meaning, show them by your actions. Show them that you can move mountains. Show them that you you know you 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 are in control of the elements that you, that you know that the, that that snake ain't gonna bite you. Go ahead and pick him up. Show him, man. You know what I mean? The reason why he bites you is because you 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 are the way you are. Once you stop being the way you are, the snake becomes your friend, and you ain't gotta worry about him no more. Verse thirty-seven. You will speak to them of my universal spirit, of the immortality of the spirit, and of their constant evolution. Meaning spiritual evolution. Now all the people have been hollering about physical evolution. All the Charles Darwin people have been talking this crap all these years. How about you apply the same stuff to spiritual evolution and study that? Because that's something real. You know, it, all it, you know, man it used to have tails and all that. You can keep that. But we are spirit. We are evolving every day. Every day we are, we are evolving. And once we become knowledgeable of this thing, a lot of us going to take off like rockets in this thing. They really going to... You know, have something they can work with as far as their spiritual growth and the ability to reach something tangible, tangible stuff. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's it's going to come back to you materialistic, you know, later on. But you got to go get you have to put off. You have to. What did he what word did he say? Renounce materialism first and then you can embrace spiritualism and then your materialistic stuff will be in its proper place and you won't have to worry about it no more. You, verse 37 says, you will speak to them of my universal spirit, of the immortality of the spirit, and of their constant evolution. You will teach them true prayer, the communication of the spirit. Now, there's a section in the book, book called Spirit to Spirit Communication. And so, you, what he say? You have to learn it. You have to study on it, meditate it, familiar yourself with it, uh, live it, and then come back and teach it. You know, how this proper prayer, what do you say? True prayer and communication of the spirit. And you will free them from their errors of and prejudices. We're full of errors. That's the number one sin of America right now is, is ignorance. And it's by ignorance that we're making errors. The children of Israel. I don't know if I said America. I should have said Israel. But we're making errors. You know, and we have prejudices. You know, prejudices being stuff that we thought we knew. But it's going to turn out it's going to be wrong. You know, we shouldn't have thought that in the first place. And so we're going to have to undo some of this stuff. You know, a lot of people say, you know, I've been to church all my life and, you know, I don't say anything. But in my back of my mind, I'm going, man, this sucks for you, pal, because you got a lot of lies to get rid of. A lot of prejudices that's going to have to be corrected. That is the work I entrust you, a work of love and patience. So that's this. This is teaching it. This is teaching the teachers right here. That's what I title this from teaching the teachers. Chapter 60 of the New Testament is where you're teaching the teachers. Verse 38 says, heal all ills. This is big, man. Healing is a big one in this one. Get ready. You know what I'm saying? For the healing balm. He said, those are the body and of the spirit. For you have the mission of comforting, strengthening, and healing your fellow man. Okay, so as you go out with this divine mission to be this apostle or whatever capacity he puts you in, healing is a serious thing. And he does it, he, he, healing is for just as the Messiah used it in order to convince people that, you know, you are of the Father. That's why he's giving it to us and he's telling us to do it. For you have the mission of comforting, meaning it is, you can't just sit back and say, yeah, I can heal you if I want to. No. Remember what he said earlier? If you don't do the good, you get counted just like you did bad. You got to actually get up and go heal somebody. You actually got to go do this thing. And yet I ask you, what health will you transmit to those who need it if you yourselves are ill? Now, see, now you're stepping on my toes now because I'm ill. I have ailments and stuff, and I ain't been able to move none of them. I'm, I, I think I'm seeing it move in other people, you know, 
praying for people and they you know they ain't even thinking about their tooth hurt or they barely hurt or whatever it was and i'm sitting here going dang the lord is mighty but at the same time i'm thinking about my own personal ailments and i'm going i'm still limping here lord and, and i believe he's telling me you winning because you limping or you limping because you winning i'm not really look check out the video called victory um what peace can you emanate from your spirit if it is stirred up by worry so he said how can you fix somebody else now this is breaking breaking a lot of people down i say he's stepping on my toes because because he's true but let's keep going let's keep going suffering remorse and low passions how can we fix these people how can we pick a people with low passion if we got low passion he says you can only offer to your brother that which you have stored up in your heart already so he's giving us a hint here we need to get this stored. verse 40 I'll bring you a clear and simple teaching so that you can learn to live among sinners without being contaminated. Pass among thorns without being wounded. Okay, so we, wait a minute. Is he, yeah, I believe he does come back to us. So let's just stay with it. <clears throat> I bring you a clear and simple teaching so that you can't so that you won't be contaminated. But watch this part. Pass among thorns without being wounded. Now what's thorns? Thorns and thistles are the, you know, um, the, the things of this world dealing with like finances I found and you know different stuff like you can think of a thorn or this or it's like an unexpected bill or a car crashing or you know what I'm saying something that's going to cause you a little pain financially financially it's, it's money like you know um, uh, check didn't show up on time all of a sudden you in the thorns you in the thistles you know what I'm saying somebody come begging you for money they in the thorns and thistles and they asking you to help them out of it out of the thorns and the thistles Say, but you can go through it without getting wounded. You know what I mean? They they wondering why you ain't down there at that food camp. Why you ain't at the food bank line with them. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I'm saying? This is why. See horror and ignominy <laughs> without being scandalized. And inhibit a world of misery without fleeing from it. Being rather desirous of remaining in its bosom to do all that is possible for the needy sowing the seed of good and the paths of all see this is what he's expecting of us and this is why we're doing this because we want to know the choir ones want minds want to know okay we we understand that you know things have changed and they definitely didn't change you definitely change boy if you if you still walking around with a king james bible in your hand these days where you going with it you know what i mean where you going with it uh uh remember this book tells you don't carry a lot of books you know you know i carry my king james bible with me but you know what i'm saying you know i'm liable to show up with you know a whole suitcase full of books you got enoch and jash and the lost books in the bible forgotten books to eat and all them days is over with you gonna put this thing on your heart he gonna put this thing on your heart it's gonna be on your heart now so mm -mm. you ain't carrying the bible now boy ain't no more bible thumpers now boy you thumping your chest saying i, I got love in here Verse 41, since this Eden was made into an inferno by the sins of men, it is necessary that they cleanse their stains and return their life to the original purity. And that's what the tribulation is about. We're about to go back to the original purity. Problem is, the purification process is fire. And it's going to hurt. Still on qualities and abilities needed in the new apostles. And I think we're almost finished. Verse 42 says, I will not send as emissaries. Here's go another word. He says envoys and apostles and emissaries. So as emissaries, those who are dead to the life of grace. All right. So I mean, if they ain't got no grace, so if they, if you know, they he's not gonna send them. And he's just telling you how what corrections that need to be made in your life. He's telling you what we, what we got to be clean up. He ain't sending nobody that you know we gotta have grace. For they will have nothing to give. I will not give this mission to those who have not cleansed the selfishness of their hearts. Okay. So, any serious? He ain't. So, you, you, you can still gain the knowledge. You can still gain. You, you can still turn your light on. But we're talking about new apostles. We're talking about the people that's going forth to carry this thing. We're talking about the, 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 the ones, you know, carrying the bread, carrying the loaf these days. The, the, you know. You know that fullback coming out that backfield. Yep, them guys. This is this is their training. This is you know this is spring training. <clears throat> the emissary 
of my word must be a disciple of mine whose simple presence makes people feel peace in their hearts. Now, <clears throat> that's self-explanatory. You know, one of the things that, you know, I personally got to work on. Remember, guys, I'm not coming at you saying that I'm, I'm a good guy. You should be trying to be like me. No, I lay somebody out in a minute. You know what I'm saying? You heard my feelings. You heard my feelings. I've been to pull my sword off and cut your head off. You know what I'm saying? I've been no had I had a sword before I even knew what a sword was. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, I used to fight so much in high school because I run my mouth. And so, you know what I'm saying? I know I can fight back. So while I'm sitting here talking to, you know, this person, I know I got the I got a heck of a sword in the word of God. And you sitting there with your little butter knife, you know, and with your little, you know, Psalms 23 butter knife, you know what I'm saying? Let's go, let's fight. But no, you can't really do that. Not going forward. He's saying when you leave there, he, what he say earlier, you have to be patient with them. You have to, you know, treat them with kids' gloves, you know, and understand that they're going to get there one day. So when you leave their presence, you're leaving their presence with a sense of peace in their hearts. You're leaving them with heart, with peace in their heart. Not like me. See, I was the one. I, I used to, I tell you, doing the Bible say to, to shake the dust off your feet before you leave, you know, before you leave. And I'd do that if I was leaving and going to walk home or whatever. But if I was getting in my car. I get there right there on your gravel driveway and punch that joker so so all to the ground. I'll be pelling and you have rocks banging all over you. I try. I wouldn't want to break your windows out or nothing like that. But if I could ding your roof with a few of the rocks as I spin my tires out of your driveway, I'll let you know. You know what I mean? I ain't leave nothing here. I ain't got nothing left here. Shake the dust off my feet. But no, that ain't what I'm supposed to be doing. I got to change that up now. Right, that's one of, the, one of the things in my little toolbox I got to go take out. One of them tools that's going to get me in trouble. Or at least, you know, not let me fly where I want to be. He must possess the virtue of knowing how to console his brothers, even in their difficult moments. Me, when they acting a fool, you know, you got to be able to console them. You know what I mean? It's some tough stuff. It's some serious, it's some serious, what do you call them, emissaries? You know, he's pretty good stuff. Emissaries and envoys, he, you know, you know, it ain't no joke. And bear always, in the words of light, that dissipate all darkness from the spirit and understanding. All right, y'all. That's it. We're going to start the next one in verse 44 where we're looking at the comportment while spreading the word. Comportment, we said, was behavior or whatever. So we'll get into that next time. We're going to close it out. Uh, excuse me for the uncut. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to try to edit all this mess. You know what I'm saying? Put it in your watch later list. Well, you know, whatever you're going to do. If you made it this far, you good now. Oh, we made it. We was going to go through all 120 verses. I don't know what we was thinking. Praise the Lord, we made it this far. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.